what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And, you know, over the course of the past, uh, uh, I want to say a little over a day and a half, 36 hours and some change at this point, I've been thinking about the last episode of The Clone Wars, The, the Phantom Apprentice, Season 7, Episode 10. We're leading into the penultimate and antultimate episode of the entire show and what it's all boiling down to. And quite frankly, it's fantastic. Now, yeah, there was the middle arc of the season with uh, with Rafa and Trace that just were not good. It was not good across the board, but it was building up Ahsoka, rebuilding Ahsoka in some opinions, uh, leading her to this position where she is to go take on Mandalore and take on Maul and help, uh, you know, survive Order 66 and go on to become Fulcrum and everything else we know from Star Wars Rebels. And then what we're going to find out in Star Wars Mandalorian Season 2. And at this point, one name runs current throughout the entirety of this particular thing. And that is, of course, Dave Filoni. And a lot of people on Twitter I've seen more good than bad by a metric mile have all been absolutely supportive of Filoni. Absolutely supporting what his vision is, and are now calling for him to take over Star Wars implicitly. And you know what? Here's the thing. I completely agree. Now, I've said this kind of stuff before, and this is more a bit of a rehash, I'll fully admit. But no, I'm, I'm in the mood, I'm in the moment I want to talk about this. When we think about Dave Filoni, when we think about everything that's gone on with Star Wars over the span of the last, oh God, almost eight years now, and everything revolving around the uh, Kathleen Kennedy and, and all the nonsense with the sequel trilogy and just where Star Wars is at its best, right now that is with the world-building aspects and the storytelling that Dave Filoni brings to the table, which is one of the reasons why I and many others do believe that it's time to just hand him the keys to the kingdom. And I know a lot of people are probably going to sit there and say, well, you know, Kathleen Kennedy's doing this and she's doing that. And because of her, these things happen. And I want to just come out and say, I absolutely fundamentally wholeheartedly agree with you. Kathleen Kennedy is the absolute reason why we are in the position where we are. Make no mistake. The buck stops with her. She's the head of the studio. She calls the shots. She greenlights the projects. It's her job as a producer to put the right people in the right role in order to get the best product. And that is something in regards to, let's say, the television side of things. She's done quite well. We can we can argue Ryan Johnson until the end of time and of course anyone out there who's against Ryan Johnson and The Last Jedi I am on your side make no mistake about that that is definitely a flub and a flub that cost the sequel trilogy I would argue well over a billion dollars in profit and competent storytelling um, and a lot of other things and so now what we're left with what we're left with in regards to Star Wars has everything to do with going to the TV Disney Plus it's what Disney wanted to focus on they know that there is a large love of Star Wars content. They know that a lot of people still love it more than don't, even though you might you might look through YouTube and find yourself absolutely embroiled uh, or, you know, bogged down, if you will, by all the negative Star Wars content, you know. But what we have is still a very diehard, passionate fan base outside of a couple areas. Every time I leave my house, I drive around. I see somebody wearing a Star Wars t-shirt. I see somebody wearing a Star Wars decal on their car. I see somebody rocking some Star Wars merch. What that says to me is, is that it's not dead. It might not be in great position, but it ain't dead. Fans are fans, and they're going to be fans until the end of time. And how do you keep fans happy? Well, you have to put the right people in the right position, and that, at least in regards to television is what Kathleen Kennedy is doing right now. And we have to, again, go and look just brief overview of what Filoni has brought to Star Wars to expand upon the mythos and to make it something that is truly spectacular. We have to go and look at the Clone Wars, even though, yeah, it had a bit of a rocky start as the show progressed, as Filoni got better as, a, as not only a world builder, but a storyteller, the show and the characters and the themes, everything evolved, everything grew, everything was started becoming cohesive as it was leading us towards the beginning of the uh, Revenge of the Sith to end out the prequel trilogy. We know where it's going to end, but at this point, it's about the journey to get there. And and after that whole thing fell through, after Disney canceled it, after its sixth season, uh, or fifth season, really, you know, things were definitely not looking good for the continuation of that story. But Filoni got himself 
a, a bit of a, a bit of a parachute, if you will, a bit of a golden parachute. Back in 2014, when they released the first season of Star Wars Rebels, this time it took place 20 years after the events of the Clone Wars, leading in to the original trilogy, getting a chance to take a look at what happened before the events of A New Hope, and in some cases, even showcasing some of the characters that were in the original trilogy, and that was pretty cool too. And it, it allowed us to see what happened to the Jedi, what happened to at least a Jedi who survived, and how they're trying to fight back. And that grew it into itself as well. It already started off in a better position than the Clone Wars did. And as it moved and moved and moved, it just found its footing very quickly. I remember watching the first season of that show. And when Ezra goes to the temple uh, and he ends up talking to Yoda, I knew that it was Frank Oz's voice. And, and I started getting teary-eyed at hearing Frank Oz as Yoda again. And then in season two, when Ahsoka's back, and then she goes up against Vader, that was cool as shit. You know, like, this, seeing that culmination, that storytelling culmination that's navigating itself around the films, but giving us that also emotional resolution, that kind of resolution uh, and connectivity that a lot of people out there really, really, really like. And that's how I view Filoni. That's how I view the world building and the characters that he's created. And another thing, too, is while he's been working on the Clone Wars Season 7 and giving us approximately two th two thirds of excellence, one third of it, you know, maybe in a couple of years we'll appreciate the, the, the Trace and Rafa arc a bit more. I, I don't know. I, d I don't know. It all depends on how it maybe ties together for the last two episodes. I have no idea. I don't think you're going to be able to make it good. Uh, it felt like filler, and, and, and it lost a lot of people, but the Siege of Mandalore brought them back in. Like It was almost like that arc was a tease, and then where we are now is something entirely different. However, all that aside, he also worked, created Star Wars Resistance, which was a show about leading into the sequel trilogy. And that's a good show. They ended it after season two. It failed to find the foothold and the popularity that Clone Wars Rebels did. And even the Clone Wars did. Uh, or Sorry, Star Wars Rebels and the Clone Wars. It failed to find the popularity. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that it was a different animation style and it took place in the sequel trilogy and there wasn't a lot that they really could tie it to right off the bat. However... As it progressed and it led into the events of The Force Awakens and allowed us to see what other people experienced when everything in The Force Awakens went down, then Season 2 took place after The Last Jedi, again allowing us to see what kind of happened in between The Last Jedi and uh, The Rise of Skywalker to an extent. And I haven't finished the show yet, so... I don't know everything, but it's a good setup. It was good characters. It was definitely aimed more for kids, but Filoni had said that he modeled that show, that idea off of stories his grandfather told him about being a combat pilot in World War II. And that was where he got the idea for the Aces, got the idea uh, for, uh, for everything, and he put out the show that while, yes, tonally different than Clone Wars and Rebels, it found its own footing and it has its own fan base. Now, I do think that Filoni should continue to tell more animated stories. I think in that particular regard, he shines the best. But he has really wanted to dive into live action, uh, directing the pilot episode of The Mandalorian, which I just rewatched again the other day, and that was pretty damn awesome. Uh, and then doing episode five was a little bit of a, of, a, of a misstep, but one, again, that he's learning. He's not a, you know, a film director yet. And he wants to know. He shadowed J.J. Abrams. I'm pretty sure he shadowed Ryan Johnson. I would say he probably shadowed Ryan Johnson maybe a bit more concerning the fact that in the Siege of Mandalore, there's a couple very clear ominous references uh, to The Last Jedi, both uh, uh, you know, visual, visually and thematically. So, yeah, if he's there to stand for The Last Jedi, uh, maybe Filoni can find a way to make that movie better. You know, maybe maybe he could do a show that's based around the events of The Last Jedi and tell us something that's actually cohesive and makes us give a damn about what happens. I don't know. I don't want to put too much on the guy's plate. But I think ultimately, right now, what Kennedy should do is create a Star Wars subdivision within Lucasfilm while she still oversees the day-to-day -day operations because that ain't going to change until the end of next year, till the beginning of 2022, really. Uh, but allow Dave to come on in as the creative and run the show. Now, I don't know if everything involving the High Republic, they've said nothing is going to tie into um, the what's in production right now. I, I think eventually they will. 
but it tells me that where Filoni is operating and where he, he feels the best at and where the audience wants him is within the prequels and the OT and maybe the sequel trilogy in that era. Because now he's developed three shows that operate within each individual trilogy. So at this point now, it's it's where he goes next is probably going to be more Mandalorian. From what Sam what Weir was saying, Dave Filoni has cooked up a lot of stuff for the Mandalorian Season 2 that's going to blow everybody's minds. And I would believe him. I be- would believe Sam what Weir on this one because he's been adamantly a fan of Dave Filoni for years. Freddie Prince Jr. has also come out and very much defended Filoni uh, and, and sung his praises in regards to the storytelling aspect of the of you know rebels and everything else and i think that at this point in time we can look at everything going on with star wars and we can we can really pinpoint and trace it back to the underscore uh you know like the overall blanket really of feloni and that's not to say that there aren't talented creatives that are working alongside him john favreau obviously a lot of other people who handle the writing aspects and and the the production aspects of these shows, and I don't want to discredit their creative ability, but it does kind of seem that they they need a leader. They need a leader to come in and guide the ship, and they haven't had that with Kennedy, not in the way that they, we've had it with Filoni, and I'm talking about this going all the way back to 2008 with the release of The Clone Wars. He was able to guide the ship, and then, you know, when Disney took over and they axed The Clone Wars, they did give him another chance with Rebels, and hey, that was a popularity, that was a popular thing. That was success. So they said, okay, we'll give you another show, Star Wars Resistance. And then from there, Kennedy said, okay, let's bring back The Clone Wars for Season 7. We'll do this for a Disney Plus exclusive, and then that will be that, and they pulled Filoni off of Resistance and put him on there, and I think ultimately that kind of led to the end of Resistance as well, but that's all well and good we're getting that we're getting a solid completion to this to this thing that he started all the way back 12 years ago which is why I'm, I'm on board with it so going forward focus on the small screen is what disney should do and the person who should do that is feloni hand him the keys to the kingdom and let's see what he creates let's let him make star wars great again let's let him put the right people in the right jobs and let him go back to telling stories the way that he wants to, which is learning from Lucas, which is about family, which is about hope, the things Lucas strived for. The corporate aspect of Disney is never, ever, ever going to change, especially with the current pandemic, because they're losing so much money per day. It is within their best interest to make Star Wars as profitable as they possibly can, because if not, then they're going to be losing even more money. And so by making Star Wars more profitable, uh, by using Filoni and the worlds he creates and the characters he creates would allow them, I think, to capitalize on it in a way to where everyone benefits. Disney makes more money because of merch sales. Fans uh, get to see good content, and Filoni gets to create the content that he so vehemently loves and he wants to use. And I think that is where we should find ourselves uh, as Star Wars fans is pushing for that. Uh, I know people have, have like... Can, there's been some attacks on Filoni recently over Ahsoka and, and I don't know, Trace and Rafa. Uh, I, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's nonsense. You know, not everyone's a perfect storyteller, but I think you have to look at, you know, what they actually do. Like uh, there's a, a spiritual guidance counselor uh, named Dr. Wayne Dyer who died a couple of years ago, unfortunately. But he has this great quote that I love where he says, people buy your music, not your words. They buy your passion. Clearly, Filoni has passion for Star Wars. Clearly, he has an unyielding desire to tell stories within that within that uh, space, and he's good at it. So it's time for Disney to double down. It's time for Disney to give him something to work on. And uh, if you want my honest opinion, if you want my, this is my speculation, what I think they should do, because they're stuck with it now, and they've got to find a way to make it work, is they need to get Filoni to create a series around Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's Edge, Batu, that whole thing, they need to have something that drives fans to the theme park. They need to have something that would be canonical that would drive the fans to the theme parks because, hey, Disneyland probably ain't reopening in 2020, not probably opening up again until 2021. So it's in a very different place. We're in a very different environment. And I think Filoni could be the one to get it back on track. And I just want I want um, Kennedy to get out of the way. I want Kennedy to put him in charge, let him team up with with Favreau, and and then just create, give him a blank check, and just let them create. Because at the end of the day, and this is where I'll leave it, this is where they are going to succeed. And if they succeed, Star Wars succeeds, which then Disney succeeds, and everybody wins. And who doesn't want to win? 
I love winning. Winning is great. Now, give me more good Star Wars, goddammit. But anyway, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your opinions. Let me know down in the comments below. Again, I appreciate everyone watching this. This is more of an off-the-cuff rant. Uh, I just wanted to, to get it off my chest and put it out there to you guys. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day. And uh, peace the hell out.